Okay, so this may be a bit late, but I thought I'd go for it anyway, so let's have a chat about Fallout 4. Originally this was going to be a talking points, but due to various scheduling issues that hasn't actually taken place. We may still do it in the future, I don't know, but uh, it's a few months since Fallout 4 came out, so I thought I should probably uh, probably put something out myself, because I've had these, uh, these opinions on the game that um, I've had for a while, or since it released, but I haven't really had an outlet to express them. So, yeah, let's talk about Fallout 4 for, oh, I don't know, a few minutes. So, first off, let's just go over the setting. So, Boston, I love it. I quite like the focus on the urban environment. It's, it's a lot larger than it is in the previous Fallout games, the previous modern Fallout games. I haven't actually played the older Fallout games. Uh, but yeah, Boston... I like where they're going with the with the whole urban urban theme and everything feels a lot more. They've they've gone a lot more onto the whole retro futuristic kind of look uh, to that than they have in previous Fallout games. So it's uh, it's got a it's got a bit of a I don't know sort of a kitschy feel, quite nice little like rounded buildings and uh, quite colourful uh, in comparison to places like Washington or New Vegas. Although New Vegas was more neon, but this is actually the colours of the buildings themselves really stand out, as well as the actual older buildings, the red brick uh, style buildings. I must admit, I don't actually know much about the uh, the, <laughs> the history of Boston itself uh, in, our, in real world terms, so it has been quite an interesting little look at, um, at early American history, because it's not really something I've looked into at all. It's been nice from like, a little discovery perspective. Uh, just seeing all of like the oh I don't know what they what they call it the the freedom route or the freedom roads quest that you go on for the the railroad I found that quite interesting from a um, from a history perspective and uh, yeah just getting out of Boston itself the surrounding areas are also quite interesting with the whole I, I really like the the weather effects and the especially the, the lighting has massively improved over the over the last games so kind of pushing that engine to the limit as far as uh, as far as that goes and uh, I do wish that they that Bethesda had used a different engine for it I do wish they'd kind of finally um, finally broke their chains on the creation engine um, but yeah it's it's got some really nice weather effects and lighting that really improve the atmosphere of the surrounding areas so, especially with the, the radiation storms and things like that, you haven't really seen so much in previous fallouts. So you're really starting to feel the effects of the actual radiation itself as a as a constant danger and lingering presence. And, um, yeah, all the, the vegetation as well has really, has really come a long way since Fallout 3, which was basically just dust, and uh, New Vegas, which was just sand. So now you actually have a lot of a lot of trees all bent and twisted and out of shape. You've got all different vegetation types. You've got it feels it feels a lot wetter, which is which is something I really appreciate. So the further south you go, the more flooded you see all these flooded towns and uh, uh, puddles and buildings that have been just washed away, and uh, that's a really interesting way to go from a. Uh, an apocalyptic perspective, so it, it just feels miserable. Gameplay has also improved for the most part. Combat feels punchier, stealth feels pretty much the same. But uh, yeah, I do I do definitely like the the increased focus on the gunplay and uh, how much that they've improved that aspect of it. So whereas in previous Fallout's it, it kind of felt like an RPG with action tacked on, a lot of people said that it was it felt like um, Oblivion or Skyrim with guns. Whereas in this, it feels, it feels a lot more, a lot more actiony, for better or worse. And uh, I will talk about that in a second. But it feels like, it feels like I'm actually engaging in the combat a lot more with, uh, with like flanking maneuvers and using different weapons, cycling through uh, to find out which, which works best in which situation. My character was a gunslinger, so I used a lot of pistols, and um, I used explosives as well. But uh, just picking up some of the other weapons in, in, the, in the world as well. When you're running low on ammo and you have to sort of scrabble around in the ruins to try and find something from an enemy, like an enemy's gun, that you can just pick up and use. 
Um, they all feel quite quite punchy and quite um, separate from each other. They don't feel like you're just changing modifiers and things. And um, yeah, the the enemy AI they 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 tend to use a lot more um, tactics this time around. They're still they're still on the lighter side of tactics, so you don't really get any major military flanking maneuvers or anything. Uh, a lot of enemies will just kind of charge at you en masse, but uh, some of like the, the raider gangs and things like that, the Brotherhood of Steel, um, they'll actually try and take a lot, take cover a lot more and they won't sort of stick their heads out as much. Uh, they'll try they'll try and recognize places where you can't shoot them, but they, they can shoot you, which which is a massive improvement over the previous games. And uh, in general, they feel less bullet spongy. They feel they kind of still feel bullet spongy, which is still a bit annoying. I don't know whether that's um, just carried over code from the the old games, but they behave a lot a lot the same. But they die a lot quicker. It feels like they die a lot quicker, but also you die a lot quicker as well. Um, which is cool. I like it. I like the the focus on tactics rather than just sort of trying to deal out the most damage uh, in the quickest period of time. And stealth, like I said, it feels pretty much the same. I haven't really noticed any difference to any of any of the stealth systems. Maybe they have more of a focus on the on the lighting aspect. So uh, being in in the dark makes you feel uh, makes you more stealthy. I don't know. I haven't really noticed much of a difference. But then again, I don't actually use much stealth. I just kind of go in guns blazing for the most part. So overall, I I would rate the the combat a lot higher than it was in the in the previous games. The gameplay, uh, at a minute to minute basis, feels a lot more engaging. I actually feel like I'm participating in these massive gunfights and uh, coming through, and it feels a lot more satisfying than it did. Whereas in something like New Vegas, I kind of I often felt like I was just going going into a gunfight just to get to the next story element. Which, um, yeah, it's it's kind of reversed, and uh, maybe maybe for the better. I don't know. It depends on who who likes to play it. It has come at the cost of the story, which is for the most part terrible. It has it has some some good elements in it. I'm talking about the the main story here. Uh, the side quests are mm, oh, actually, I suppose they're not so great either. They have they have some really good standouts. I do really like the um, the robot ship. That was a fun quest to do. But for the most part, there's not really any any way that you can resolve a, the majority, the vast majority of the quests without going into combat and killing uh, some rival faction or someone who's double crossed you or something. I just feel a lot more limited than I did in the previous games, which I really don't like in in an RPG. And the combat is really good. I just wish that there was more to everything else. So just speaking from a pure main story perspective, I really like the opening. I think it was fantastic having a pre-war um, opening, seeing how your how your family life is in the pre-war, seeing the, the bombs actually go off. I do kind of wish that there was actually more to flesh out your, your family. I mean, I, I've got this... I've got this son that I don't really get to know very well, and uh, actually a wife that I don't really get to know very well either, but uh, especially the son. And uh, we don't get any any vault life, I suppose, which um, is a bit sad. I did quite like the, the vault opening in Fallout 3, even if it did kind of last a bit overly long, they've kind of gone the opposite direction in this. So... Yeah, I mean, I I really like the the setting to start with. Maybe a lot of people might get a bit bored of it eventually, but I would have liked to explore it a little bit more. Um, and then the the bombs go off. Obviously, you get frozen. Uh, your wife gets killed. Your son gets taken, and uh, you go out on your own. I do like that they they start they start you in the same area as well, so you get to see your your old town. Uh, completely destroyed. So that was a nice touch. Codsworth was a, a very nice touch. I did quite appreciate him as both a, a a general NPC in the settlement and also a companion. But that may be because he actually uses my my name. So who knows? Maybe I'm a bit easy to please in that regard. 
the main story itself, it kind of... I wouldn't say meanders. It's, um... It has this focus on the on the whole getting your son back for the most part, and uh, the whole institutes the big evil even institute uh, looming over. I kind of wish that they'd done a bit more with that, so a, more, a bit more with the paranoia of the whole anyone could be a synth kind of thing. They did they did reference it here and there, especially with uh, when you meet uh, Piper and goes to Diamond City, but it mm, it's not really. It, it doesn't feel like I could just meet a person and then wonder if they're a synth, which I was really looking forward to, and uh, hoping that they, they'd go a bit more with that sort of angle. I was hoping that they'd, they'd put a lot more actual synths in the game, whereas instead it kind of feels like, unless someone is specifically noted as a synth, which kind of defeats the purpose of the paranoia, you don't really get the impression that anyone you interact with could be a, a secret synth and that they could kill you at any moment or that they, they're gathering information. You don't really get to explore any settlement and find out little clues, or, little clues on who might be a synth and who might not be. Which is a shame and uh, I wish they'd improve that. I did actually go with the, with the Institute route in the uh, in the main story, because they have their, their faction system, which is nice. I really like the, the faction system that they have. It was a bit better in New Vegas. Um, it was actually a lot better in New Vegas, sad to say. But um, yeah, I, I started off going off with the with the Brotherhood, uh, kind of like their whole airship thing and movable base there. They got some cool things going on. But then as soon as I got to the, the Institute, I found out... Um, that that was a really cool area and I wanted to stay there without blowing everyone up. You meet your son, which is nice. I, I like that they, they call him father. I, fe I feel that that's quite an interesting route to take. But, um, and and your son is a, is a complete dick, which is one of my favourite things, that you meet him and then you're not, you're not going to rescue him, he's a bit set in his ways. And uh, he's led his full life, and he's not really going to change. He's uh, he sees himself as being quite this this nice leader, and he's all for the good of the wasteland. And you can kind of see it yourself, but he is going about it in a bit of a dickish way. So that's not fun. Uh, oh, I actually skipped over Kellogg. I really like the the Kellogg dream sequence that you go through. Uh, well, maybe not a dream sequence; it's memory sequence. And uh, I kind of I was hoping that you'd actually get get more of that. Um, going into characters' mindsets and uh, using their like y using their augments and things. I'm a, I'm a bit sad to say that uh, Kellogg is the only character in the game with these like neural implants and augments, and he's he's basically a cyborg. I was really hoping we'd get to actually become a cyborg ourselves, or at least find some some way to create cyborgs. But sad to say, you don't really get any of that. Uh, but yeah, I, I went on with the with the institute, kind of mostly because I I felt like I I was being pushed into the the brotherhood a bit too much, and uh, I wanted to try something a bit different. I'd fought with the brotherhood in in Fallout Three and Fallout New Vegas. I I did a run through with the brotherhood as well. Um, I kind of I did everyone's ending in New Vegas, but uh, yeah, having a, having this new faction that was uh, meant to be evil but you could join and they had all this cool technology I found was really interesting so I went with them and then of course they they make me the leader of the institute but don't actually give me any powers to do anything I can't actually you know make peace with any of the other factions I've just got to kill them all so that's not fun I will actually speak about the other the other factions in the game uh, briefly so I've talked about the the brotherhood I like them I really like their whole uh, just suddenly going from this like insular society to really sort of striking out and being a bit uh, warmongering, and uh, everyone's kind of unsure about what their what their goals are, and a, a little bit afraid of seeing these giant power armored knights roaming around. I do like that you see their helicopters and things, and actually that's the same with the institutes as well. I kind of like that you see everyone's 
little faction vehicles and their and their soldiers roaming around, having little uh, wars out in the wastelands. So that that kind of makes it feel a lot better in in the atmosphere sense. Uh, the Brotherhood. I like Captain Maxon. I, I the thing his name is Maxon. It could be Maxwell. I like where they're where they're going with him. And uh, I found him to be a, a rather interesting character as well in his whole, again, again his, his dickishness. Um, yeah, and then you've got, um, I can't even remember his name, the George Clooney guy, who is a bit bland, but um, I can kind of see where they're going from with him as well. He's a bit of a zealot as well, and uh, going all, all for the good of the Brotherhood. So that's about as much as I could say about the Brotherhood. Again, it's it's not really as deep or complex as anything in in New Vegas, where you had all these characters with all different motivations and they they all disagree with each other within the same faction. Whereas in this, it kind of feels like everyone's aligned with the same thing, even though they might grumble and moan a bit about decisions. They still broadly think it's okay. And then you have the the railroads. Which, I didn't actually spend time with them too much, to be honest, so I can't really speak on how in-depth they are. I um, Obviously, I, I did the Railroad quest, because you have to, uh, just to meet up with them. And, um, I, uh, I, I don't know, I, I like their, sort of like, their robot savants, or robots that can see the future, kind of. And, um... Generally, their whole their whole sort of philosophy of like freeing the synths and things that was cool. I was hoping, well, maybe maybe you do. I, again, I don't really know too much about them. I didn't really do their quest line too much before joining the institute. Um, I was hoping that you could actually go and do missions where you're sort of sneaking about and maybe like hiding from institute patrols and things, freeing synths from camps or whatever. Or I don't know. I don't know if they have camps. Um. Just sort of that sort of thing with the with the whole stealth angle, and maybe you do, but I kind of have an inkling that it maybe is just more of the same like run and gun kind of thing, where you're just going into uh, institute facilities or raid accounts that happen to have a an institute synth uh, captured in there. Maybe I don't know. So I wouldn't really want to comment any further on them without actually actually knowing. And then of course there's the Minutemen, which is the probably the most disappointing faction in the game. Simply because there's nothing to them. I mean they they are like the sort of do what you like faction where you can just kind of join them and then not really bother about any of the any any of the main story threads or any I don't know, dissolution with the with the ranks. Even less than there is currently. But they felt so bare bones and so uh, rudimentary, I suppose. You've got this like bland vanilla army that you're trying to gather together. You're building settlements, and uh, Preston Garvey is just a I don't know. He's just a, a wet towel. But yeah, I mean, like the only the only other significant person that I remember within the actual within the actual minimum itself is the the woman that helps you build up castle base and um, she's more of like a tutorial character so there's not really there's not really anything to her either other than being a bit gruff so I don't even know how you could really call them a, a faction it felt it felt like if, I, if there was to be an equivalent maybe there was the the yes man faction in Fallout New Vegas but even with that the yes man yes man himself had so much personality and character and everyone you interact with, because you, the yes man thing is a, is kind of like an alternative to doing faction quests. It's uh, you're going behind the back of everyone, you're betraying everyone, and uh, it's one of the more interesting ways of going about the game. Whereas in this, it, it kind of feels like even though it's even though it's an anti faction quest, it's it's kind of got the same feel of the yes man quests, but to a much lesser degree. Uh, to the point where it's kind of, rather than double-crossing everyone, you're just ignoring them entirely and pretending they don't exist. So, that's not fun. 
Um, yeah, I mean, and in general, like the, the storyline, you have you have no input on on the vast majority of things. I know a lot of people have have gone over this to death already, but the the voiced protagonist was probably one of the worst ideas that they could have actually added into the game. Uh, period. It's so constricting. You feel like you have no choice whatsoever. It gives you this little like four choices. One's a sarcastic choice. Um, one's a no that eventually turns into a yes anyway. One's more information. And uh, then of course you get your yes. So it's basically just sort of three yeses and a tentative yes. And yeah, it's a, it's a big step down from anything that Bethesda has done before. Um, in terms of their, their RPG games. And um, it, it again, it, it's so it railroads you into the combat so much that it just breaks my heart trying to trying to become a charismatic gunslinger. I might as well have just not bothered with the with the charisma skills because for the most part they're just used to sort of swindle more and more money out of characters. I don't actually rem remember any conversations in the game that use the actual charisma skill to any great degree uh, other than just getting money. And so, for all the effort that I put into charisma, it was just completely pointless. And that's a real shame when you're actually in, a, in an RPG, you don't want the talky bits to be completely secondary. Or at least I don't. Many people might. But, um... I feel that it's a it's a great shame that they've they've gone this route. So, yeah, it's it's a bit disappointing in that regard. But uh, other things as well. Oh, actually, in the gameplay sense, I forgot to talk about things like crafting and the and the power armor. I I really like the crafting. I I've got um, nothing bad to say about the crafting except maybe the amount the amount of time I spent over encumbered in the game was ridiculous compared to the other games because I'm just constantly picking up. Uh, every bit of duct tape I can. So I really like the the crafting of the of the weapons and the armor. It kind of makes you feel like you like like you're crafting something more to your tastes than to pick up a pistol and think, oh, I I like this, but I don't really like how many shots it takes. Uh, well, now you can actually change that, and uh, I do appreciate that. Uh, same thing with armor as well. You can go with sort of heavier, lighter armor and just tweak it to your liking. And uh, with a visual perspective as well, it, it feels nice having all the, like, these these pouches and belts and things all over you that you've actually put onto your onto your base armor. And uh, speaking of armor, that kind of brings me onto the power armor, which has been a, a massive overhaul. They've changed it completely into this sort of walking tank uh, vehicle kind of interface they've got going on, which I really enjoy as well. Power armor in, in the previous games was just sort of something you put on and it acted like any other armor, maybe like stronger obviously, but not any different functionally. I know in New Vegas they had like power armor training, maybe the same was in 3, I can't remember. Uh, but they had, they had power armor training that you had to go through and um, yeah, you had to do these, these tasks, these faction quests that, yeah, I mean I, I enjoyed that, but again it's, um, it was the same result. You're still just getting a a nice powerful armor that didn't really function anything differently. Whereas in four, it, it goes over your your own armor and it's a lot more durable. You can mod it a lot more. Um, you can you can use it and and feel like a badass. And it's got its own it's it's got its own interface, which is great. And uh, you feel like a you feel like a badass, but obviously with your fusion cores going on. And uh, the fact that you can get bits blown off you and they don't regenerate. Uh, it feels... It feels a lot better than it than it did before. And it feels like a precious resource. That once you are actually using it, you kind of... You want to be a badass with it. And then at the same time, you have to be a bit careful with it. Because, you've again, you've got bits, bits getting blown off and you think, Oh, I've got to repair my arm now. And uh, I really enjoy that sort of aspect of it. The only bad thing I'd say about the, the power armor itself is that you get it too early. And uh, by that I mean you you get it once you once you meet up with the Miniman for the first part, which is probably within the first hour of the game. 
and um, it feels like like what they what they probably should have done is to give you that sense of the of the power armor being awesome, and to give you the minigun, fight the death law thing. Oh my god, this is something I'd never do within a Fallout game uh, before within the first uh, hour, no less. And then what they should have done is just take it away, blow it up, or do something to it that make it that would make it inoperable. Whereas instead, you you've got this power armor suit, and it's obviously it's not going to be the best power armor suit in the game, but it's it's a huge jump up from what you got before, and uh, it kind of it it makes you unappreciative of the power armor, and it it's a shame because it is such a an incredible suit. Uh, it is such an incredible system, and obviously they do want to show that off. But uh, they could have they could have just done that without without giving it to you for the rest of the game. They could have just had it as a, as a one shot kind of thing. So, yeah, that's my my disappointment with Power Armor. But overall, I am quite happy with it. Uh, also, in terms of crafting the workshop that you get with any of your settlements, I'm a big Minecraft fan. Or anything with any any kind of map maker I really enjoy so to see that in Fallout was fantastic as well it is a bit fiddly um, I don't know why they don't just let you have things like walls just clip through each other maybe there's some sort of um, issue with the issue with the placement of it it can cause bugs but I don't know I think it would be a, a nice thing just just to prevent things like walls hanging in midair when you're trying to place them onto a slope. But overall I do really enjoy the, the crafting. Do you actually kind of wish they'd given you maybe less places to craft? Um, I know it sounds a bit weird, but they give you so many so many different settlements that you have to look after and you have to craft for each of them and you have to build up these settlements. And it feels like what I wanted to do was, especially when I got to somewhere like the castle, which is this massive fort that you can build up, is I wanted to build like one really big base and maybe have one or two little bases around but really they they want you to go for a and they try and push you to go for a like a scattergun approach where you have lots and lots of little bases all around the map which I don't know I don't really feel attached to any of them if I if I do it that way and the build limit is too low so they they kind of pushed you into into doing that and uh, it is a real shame, especially with with the castle, because it's a, it's a big place, and it's got that that big yard in the middle of the in the middle of the fort, and you just want to fill that space with buildings of your own creation, and you you really can't. You can just sort of build maybe one or two decent structures, and then like a farm, and then everyone else has got to live inside the walls, and you don't really have that many people that can actually live on there as well. I hesitate to say it may be a console limitation. Um, I was playing on PC. My PC could certainly handle to have at least maybe double the amount of people uh, walking around Castle Base as um, as there were in the base game. So I don't know whether it's a, a limitation on the, on the hardware that they might have put that in, but it is a big shame that they don't allow you, allow you to have more stuff and bigger bases. Especially when they give you these, these huge spaces and they say fill it up and I think I can't I really can't uh, despite how much I want to so yeah crafting I really enjoy it gameplay I really enjoy it atmosphere I really enjoy it story is a massive letdown sadly and story is what a lot of people play these games for a lot of people play for for the action and exploring which is nice and I do enjoy those parts but the story itself I yeah I, I wouldn't say it's anything special. And the choices are just abysmal. The the lack of choices, I mean. Overall, just to give you a quick perspective, I think Fallout 3 is my least favourite of the three modern Fallout games. Simply because I didn't really like the setting. I didn't like how sort of dusty and grey and green everything was. Um, I felt like, like the capital wasteland I didn't really enjoy walking around. And the combat was a bit sluggish. Same with New Vegas, actually. It was the same combat, to be honest. But um, I didn't enjoy it so much. I liked some of the story elements, but nah, for the most part, it felt a bit bland. Uh, New Vegas, 
I really enjoyed. I played so much of New Vegas. I liked the setting. I liked the. I love the factions actually. I love the story. Gameplay, as I said, was just exactly the same. And uh, the fact that it was made by Obsidian, you could clearly see the quality and the writing. I absolutely loved picking apart every every character's sort of motivations and psyche and seeing what made them tick and seeing different areas and trying to find different bits of lore. And uh, so I, I felt like there was a, a really good story. Gameplay, maybe not so great. And then Fallout 4... Uh, I, I'd place it a second behind New Vegas, but it would be a, a far distant second. So New Vegas would be quite, a, quite high in regards, quite high at the top. Uh, and then you've got to go down to Fallout 4, which is great in little short bursts, but if you're looking for anything deep, don't really. And then far below that is Fallout 3, which I I don't think I even... Oh no, I, I did complete it, but I didn't really enjoy the experience so much. So there you go. My thoughts on Fallout 4. If you have any thoughts of your own that you'd like to contribute, then please let me know in the comments. And for now, thank you very much. I'll see you next time.